This video is going to discuss the essential skill of finding components of vectors. Now if you recall from our previous videos, if we have two vectors at right angles, say vector B in the up direction and vector A running horizontally, well we can combine those into one component vector. So B in the up direction and A running horizontally will give us some component vector C, some total vector C. And that we get that by going tip to tail, rearranging our diagram to be A B, and then C is this upward portion. And it's lifted at some angle above the x-axis. So what that means for us is that this vector C, lifted at some angle, is equal to these two separate vectors, A and B. They both give the same result. C lifted at some angle will give you the same result as A plus B, which is important because A and B are said to be the components of C, the components of C. or parts, where A would be the same as our C vector in the X direction. This is the X portion of C, and B is C in the Y direction, so that's the Y portion of C. So the, an important skill is going the other way. So if, instead of going from A and B to get vector C, can we go from vector C and get A and B back out of it? For example, if you are just given on the x-axis, so drawing my axes here, if we are simply given vector C. Here's vector C. Again, lift it at some angle. Angle theta. What are the horizontal parts? Horizontal portion, the C X. And what is the vertical portion, the upward portion of that vector C Y? So this question comes up quite often. Can we take this vector C and break it into a horizontal portion and a vertical portion? Well, we can because these two are at right angles to each other. We have a right angle right in here, which means that we can do some trigonometry, which oftentimes sounds terrifying to students, but we can work it out. Because if we have this angle right here, this angle in here is theta. Therefore, we can say that sine of theta equals opposite over hypotenuse, which means that sine of theta equals Cy over our full C. So if we rearrange this by multiplying up the C, C sine theta equals our y portion. So if you know the angle and you know your total vector, you can get the vertical portion. And by the same token, cosine of theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse, which means that Cx over C so we multiply up the C the same way. So our C times cosine 
of theta will give us our horizontal component of this um, vector. So to try this with some numbers here, let's say that we have, let me give me a little more room here, draw in some axes to keep us able to tell what's going on. Okay, we have some vector up in this direction, we'll call it C, and we'll say that's equal to 20 meters. We have vector C, which is 20 meters, and it is lifted above the x-axis by 30 degrees. Well, what are the horizontal, the x direction, C, x, and what is the vertical components of this. What are the horizontal and vertical parts that make up this total vector? So we can go ahead and rewrite this and we can say 20 using our formulas from above sine 30 equals C Y. So that means that 10 meters is C Y. It means we went vertically 10 meters. That was our portion, our vertical portion of C. Uh, same token, we can go ahead and get the um, horizontal portion. 20 cosine of 30 is Cx. Make sure I keep my arrows on things. So that brings us to 17.3 meters equals C X. What that means is that we have if we have this C vector up C equals 20 lifted at 30 that is equivalent to having these two separate vectors both acting. So you can have either this one vector lifted at an angle, or you could have these two separate vectors, C, X of 17 point, oh, crazy. 3 or a C Y of 10. Those are meters. These are equivalent statements. These two vectors will have the same effect as this one angled vector, which makes life really easy to solve. Let's do one more example that's a little less intuitive. So again, we'll get our axes in here. Drawing in your axis will always, 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 always help you. Because things aren't always just up to the right. What if we have one that is directed this direction? And we'll go ahead and say that this direction is from the positive x-axis, 220 degrees. Now, what does that mean? I mean, that clearly tells us it's a long ways around the axis, but I mean, from x-axis to x-axis, we know this has to be 180 degrees. 180 degrees. Which means that the little part down in here has to be 40 degrees. So it's important to be able to do your basic geometry and figure out angles and where everything's at. So we're going to say that this vector here is 85 meters. So what are the horizontal and vertical components of this vector? Well, we have a vector which is directed this way. It has a horizontal component in the negative x direction and as a vertical component. And let's go ahead and call this vector V. 
so I don't get confused here. V equals 85 meters. And we have a VX that we're looking for. And we have a VY that we're looking for. We're looking for these horizontal and vertical components. And we already established that the inside angle here is 40 degrees. So let's go ahead and we can apply what we know using those formulas we generated all the way up here. We can get the Y portion and the X portion. So we'll go ahead and hit this and we'll go V sine theta equals V Y V sine of what is that 40 degrees equals V Y so substituting in 85 for V and we get roughly 56 degrees well 54 degrees 54.6 meters for V Y and that is noted that that's a positive number and our y direction is directed down. So that gave us the magnitude. But if we remember that down is the negative direction, you got to go ahead and put a negative sign back on that. A little trick, though, is what if we took 85 sine of, and instead of 40, we take that whole 220 equals V, Y. That will automatically, because the sign value will be negative, will automatically give us negative 54.6 meters equals Vy. Let's go ahead and try and find the horizontal component. V cosine theta equals Vx. And then we've got... 85 cosine of 40 equals Vx. So 65.1 meters equals Vx. And we're stuck with the same situation. It's in the negative direction. It's pointing the negative direction down the x-axis, but we ended up with a positive number. So this is the magnitude of our vector. It does not tell us the direction on it. So we got to remember that that's our negative direction. Put a negative sign back on it so it doesn't confuse our results later. If you were to take V cosine of 220 equals Vx, you would get automatically out of it because cosine of 220 is a negative number. Negative 65.1 meters right off the bat. V so what's this tell us? This tells us that this vector right here is equal to a downward vector of 54 meters. That's downward and directed to the left with what 65.1 meters. And see how I've left the negative signs off these because the direction is being indicated by the arrows. Here, there's no arrows over here to indicate the direction, so you have to put a sign on it so I know the direction. If you're doing it in a diagram, you don't include the negative signs because they're shown with the arrows to give the direction. And these two vectors are equal. Being able to break vectors into components is an absolutely essential skill for every single physics student. Be able to do this well and you'll be able to do most physics problems much more easily.